Picture me rolling. Is that is that is the cat Nikon rolling? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. Cool. So here we are. Episode two. Episode two. I'm buzzed. Yeah, me too. I think the first one went pretty well, actually. So yeah. uh, no one's heard it yet. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a biased opinion. But yeah, it went really well. Um, cool. So we're going to do a slightly different format today. So today's topic of discussion is going to be life lessons. So we've picked out two of our biggest life lessons and key takeaways for, that we've learned over the past couple of years. Um, so yeah, we're just going to take it in turns, hashing out what we feel has been the biggest life lessons for us. So I will uh, hand it over to Nathan to kick us off with his first life lesson. <laughs> In the spotlight again. <laughs> um, okay, my number one life lesson would be that anything is possible. Cool. Um, um, what leads you to that being a biggest life lesson? <laughs> just from what we've built around us so far, um, a lot of people set limitations on themselves because they just don't think it's possible. Um, and that's not true like absolutely anything is possible um and i feel some of our biggest challenges we've easily overcome as individuals and a company just from the fact that we have the attitude that anything's possible and actually on that i would say the reason why we have overcome those challenges is purely based on the fact that we have that belief yeah for other people in the same situation they wouldn't have been able to overcome the challenges the way that we have due to the fact that they don't have that it's because of how you approach things, yeah. right? If you go into the mindset with certainty that you're going to find a way to make it work, there's always a solution to be found. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, how will you... It's just like anything. You go to do anything in life thinking, all right, I have to make this work. What am I going to do to do it? Yeah. And just taking that one step further, it's instilling it in the people around you. Yeah. Whether it's your co-employees, um, sort of co-workers, your family, younger siblings, just slowly putting them that mentality into everyone, even if it's your parents or other people, if you can slowly just push that forward into their mindset, then it, it makes sure that they are not putting like, not that they would, but yeah. like any sort of limitations on you. Yeah, would you agree? Yeah, yeah, true. Like, so it works. Yeah. Both ways. Yeah. A, it helps them, which yeah, is of the course. main logic behind me saying that. Yeah, yeah. But B, just so they understand your mind frame. Yeah. Like I can, I, there's lots of people I won't name them because it's not fair, but that are close to me. And probably 10 years ago, before we were instilling this in people, they're like, oh, you can't do that. That's not possible. Now, every single one of them people wouldn't dare say that to me. Yeah. Because their mindset has adapted and changed along the journey. Yeah. And now they think, like, you say something and they're like, yeah, fuck. Why don't you go bigger? And you're like, fucking hell, like 10 years ago, you would have said that I'm crazy yeah. and that's not possible. And like but I, I love the saying that like, um, anything is impossible till it's done. Yeah. Like that, that is a good example of why that works because they would have seen you do things that they would have maybe said like, I don't know if you can do that. And then all of a sudden they see you do it. And then again and again and again yeah. and again with multiple things. All of a sudden they're like, Fucking hell! Yeah, <laughs> like I'm just gonna shut up and yeah, uh, no, no not only possible. that, they, they'll probably start thinking like, "Wow, if he's capable of that, what am I capable of?" Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it will create like a winning environment. It's a compound effect. Yeah, for it, sure. It is the biggest thing that, apart from well, compound effect works on anything, but it's the biggest thing that I think has carried us forward from an early age or a younger age. Is just putting that mindset into everyone around us, whether it's a challenge with the engineering team. And they're all probably listening to this and laugh their heads off. <laughs> and if you look at the OGs again, that mentality was in them from a very early age. And now it's carried through to this point. And they're all in different areas of the company now. And they can just, they just know, okay, cool. I trust that process. Or when Mr. West bought his flat when he was 21, you know, he's always had a very good mindset. He's been with us for yeah. a few years now. But we sat, it was actually in this room, wasn't it? And we had a, was it, no, was it in here? Yeah, we had a sales so. meeting. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I want to do this over the next year or so. And then it's like, no, you can actually do that right now if you want to, like yeah. within the next couple of months. And he just trusted us and believed everything that was said. And then we went and made it happen. And I think he actually, I thought, all right, it'll be like three months. And he blew my head because he did it in like 28 days. From did he? The first viewing, 
he was moved in that month on yeah. the 28th of the wow. month. And I can attest to that as well, just because like, even since when I started the, the company, like before that I had already had a pretty good mindset, you know? Yep. But even since being here, it's like, like now you say something to me, <laughs> like, oh, we're going to do this. I'm just like, yeah, all right then. Yeah. Like, whereas before it was like, I'd be like, oh my God, like, how, could, yeah, like, how yeah. could that even possibly be ha- like happen? Like, how could we even do that? Like, whereas now it's like, you're just like, yeah, okay, we're going to get to hundred mil. And I'm just like, okay, cool. Like, yeah. what do we need to do? It? It's, like, it. <laughs> and it's quite cool. It's, it's funny because you can actually see it in people's faces sometimes. Like you say something and immediately like their head's like, no. And then it's like, actually, yeah, because we can do anything that we want to do. <laughs> yeah. Like you can almost see that, like a tiny bit of the old, oh, and then it's like, no, actually, yeah, we can definitely yeah. do that. Like even when we opened the Manchester office, like I remember by that point, I'd been so conditioned to just be like, yeah, it's going to be fine. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'll just go out there. I'll just never run an office before in my life. Never run a team before in my life. But yeah, I'll just go out there and run it. It'll be fine. And that was from zero. <laughs> Literally. Absolute zero. We had nothing. We didn't know what yeah. we were doing. We'd never had a multiple office. We didn't really do any planning behind it. It was really poor. No. Saying <laughs> yeah. that. Um, planning is good, but then maybe it's not because we were just like, all right, what is needed for this? And yep. you went up there, launched it with Ryan and uh, Jordan. Just it. it was fucking full send and look at it now, crushing. That's what I was going was to say about like <clears throat> how um, when you think like this, that anything is possible and you know that to be a truth, you can do stuff like that where you, you just know. Yeah. So you can commit first to work it out later. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? True. You don't have to think too much about it. You just have to work it out. And I quite like doing that, putting yourself in the deep end. Yeah. And it was like YoFest last the way. year. Everyone's like, oh no, you're never going to do that. It's fucking like four weeks away. And we pulled off Watch the me. most <laughs> insane <laughs> festival. And we laugh about it now because everyone's like, oh, are we going to be able to do all hands? It's in two weeks. And then straight away, Dom's first answer was like, look, we did this in fucking this period. Of course it's possible. Yeah. You know, and it's funny. It's like I had a conversation ready for the Yo party in a few days with some caterers today, and they're like, oh, when is it? And I'm like, Tuesday. And you can just see their brains go, <laughs> and I'm like, that's going to be okay, yeah? Yeah, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll make it work. Nice. Um, so, yeah, no, it's, it's cool. You can, and you can just relay that into any area yeah. of your life. Um, I think having that as, like, one of your core foundational beliefs is, like, massive. Because yeah. if that's, like, your foundation of, like, what you believe is possible... But you literally can just go and achieve anything, you know? Like, if you're, if you're always having limitations in your head of just like, oh, I'll never be this, I'll never have this, I'll never have this. Like, of course you are never going to have it. Like, we were talking about it the other day, weren't we? Where it's just like, what you think is what will happen. Yeah. Like, if you're constantly thinking about negative shit and constantly thinking that you're never going to be able to achieve something, then obviously you're never going to be able to achieve it. Because your attention goes <laughs> to the negative things. Yeah. Right? You find what you put your attention on. Yeah. Don't you? True. Drive down the car, look for blue car. Uh, drive down the road, look for blue cars. You find blue cars. My biggest one is eleven like, eleven. Yeah. Eleven eleven. I fucking see mean? it daily. Oh, what? <laughs> on the clock. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you're, you're looking, looking for your, it. Your, your yeah. attention's on it. And so I love it. Find it. It just feeds yeah. me good energy, you know. <laughs> and it just always happens to be on my watch at that that time. Yeah. Well, it's like watches. Look, yeah. look for watches. You'll find nice watches. Like, I don't know. It's anything. You put your attention on it. You're going to find it. Just pop. So just up. put your just put your attention everywhere. on something that you want to achieve, and you'll do it. So if you have that like limitless mindset, then you put your energy on having a limitless mindset, then the world is full of limitless possibilities. Yeah. You know? One thing I will say, it's quite hard. We were lucky because we snapped into this from a long time ago. But it goes back to like Grant Cardone and his thing of 10x rule, just like do stuff 10 yeah. times bigger than anything. And it is sometimes hard to get your head around that. But when you start winning and realizing that is possible, then your mindset changes. So... For anyone listening to this, if you're not at that top level of, right, I can do anything, I'd just lower the target, or not lower the target, sorry, but pick something that you can quickly achieve and get like a really quick, quick win on. Yeah, quick win. Um, it's like losing weight. Once people have done it once, you know you can do it. It's why my fucking weight's up and down so much, because I know that I can get in good shape. Yeah. <laughs> but do you know but why I think that journey is? journey on that you, was very long. Do you know why I think that is? Why? Because momentum is a real thing. Yeah. yeah. It really is a real thing. Yeah. You see people in our sales department. Oh my God, that's the biggest thing. Today, like, one of their biggest days ever. Yeah, but like, once they have that momentum there, you see it's possible, you do it again. Yeah. That's why people have upward trends for months and months and months. Because they just realize how much more they can achieve. Yeah. Same with weight loss. You start losing like, you lose like a kilo a day. Or like in the first day or whatever. You realize, actually this is happening. This is possible. What I'm doing is right. And it's like that validation. That validation is momentum. That's why like, Football teams go on big winning streaks. Boxers win loads of 
fights in a row, et cetera, et cetera. Momentum is a real thing. It's actually, remember I was talking about the other day on one of our meetings, it's the curve. So you have a linear scale. Yeah. I can't remember what the other one's called, but basically it's where there's a delayed response. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think that's a big problem that as long as in your head, you know, you're on that journey. It's like, it's with fitness. So you can get fit quite quickly, but then to slowly improve to be the best, it takes a very long period of time. Yeah. But I'd say the majority of goals that people are shooting for don't have that curve. It's like very delayed for a long period of time. Then it starts compounding and then all yeah. of a sudden you're on a rocket ride. Well, it's like when people say someone's an overnight success. Yeah, like, it is. It's not fun. Bullshit. Like, right. People aren't overnight successes. It's very rare. That's, exactly. You have the five, ten years of graph that went into it before that, but obviously no one sees that part. Like you only see the part where... Oh, they're winning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're winning. <laughs> but, yeah. True. All right, cool. cool. Enough on my life lesson. I'll pass the buck to Derek. Nice. <clears throat> one of my one is um, that you sh- whatever you do, there's plenty of things you can do in life. Work out of work, with family, with friends, anything, whatever you do, have fun. Make sure you are enjoying what you're doing. Yeah. Make a game out of it. Literally the most important thing, I think, in my opinion. Yeah. How can you have a successful life, a happy life, if you're doing something which fundamentally you don't enjoy, or yeah. fundam- fundamentally you don't agree with, yeah. people you don't agree with, whatever. A group that doesn't push you forward anything yeah you should be doing something which makes you happy is like true to your core beliefs yeah and your values and you should like that should be something every day that like if you could have like a tick list every day of like i'm gonna do one thing it should be did i do something today which made me and the others around me happy yeah Yeah. and it's funny because what what you're saying is like if we Every time we do something like this, we say, oh yeah, we were talking about this the other day. Because it's like, this is the kind of <laughs> shit that we talk about all the time. But we were talking about this, you know, we were talking about um, when we were in Monaco. And you see the, like, old guys who are sat at the... When like, was this? Roulette. Tell me more about this. What Monaco trip was this? When we, when we, we, went when to, we all went together. When we went... When, um, when we stayed in... Um, the one next to the Paris. Yeah. yeah, next to Casino. But you see, like, these yeah. old guys who are clearly super successful, balling out of control. But Loads they're money. fucking miserable. Fucking miserable. And that's because they haven't done what you said, you know? Like, I think it's a very, like, there's, like, a stereotype of the type of guy who, like, spends his whole life grinding, focuses on himself, nothing else, like, wins big in business, but, like, everything else has fallen by the wayside because he's been focused on a career that actually doesn't make him happy. He's chasing money. money. Like, he's on the, it's called the hedonic treadmill where you're, like, just constantly chasing, like, material possessions and stuff that actually fundamentally doesn't make you happy yeah, yeah. That's but that's wild. what you, but that's what you think that you've put like that's what you think happiness is is like that next thing that next thing that next thing yeah. but it's like when we we're talking about on the last podcast like you have to enjoy the process of what you're doing yeah. and i feel like a lot of people miss that but i think a lot of people i think a big reason why people aren't happy is it's self-inflicted unhappiness yeah. and I, I think that's because they're not staying true to themselves I agree. they're doing things which they know that maybe they shouldn't be, yeah. um, which is causing like a confusion and upset in their head with like the things that they are doing, and that long term will build up a compound effect in your in your mind, and you end up just doubting everything. Yeah, you end up in a confused state, doubting, and just doing stuff that is not truly making you happy. Yeah. It's like it builds up over time. You should always stay true to what you know is right. And what you know, like, you are meant to do with others, for others, whatever. And I think, obviously, like, we're quite lucky because we're, we're all sat in this room together, aren't we? We all work together. It's like, we're quite lucky to have people around us who we can make it fun together. Yeah. yeah. But let's say for other people who are maybe in a job that they don't enjoy so much or they're not really too sure what, where they want to go, like, what would you say is a way to make that fun whilst still being in the current situation that they're in maybe even try to find a new it's, group of friends it's extreme that's it's tricky but tricky to do that isn't really going back like if you really take a deep dive into when we've helped channel people on the right path it's normally their groups that they're connected to that are pulling pulling them down and holding them back yeah and just the compound of them they don't necessarily need to be negative, but just not beliefs that you can go out there and achieve anything you want to achieve. Mm. 
And she's like, yeah, whatever. Oh, they must be doing something. Oh, that's dodgy or that's not right. That's just an assumption. Oh, yeah. That's just, they must be selling drugs. <laughs> Who said that about yo? Yeah. <laughs> um, do you know what I mean? Like, people just don't believe, oh, my God, we can be that successful if we just follow the process. Yeah. And have everyone else around us in a similar mindset. And that normally comes from the groups that people are part of. The biggest thing for me would be just get yourself out of that group. And I know that's fucking hard. Mm. And where would, you, where, would, where would you find a group? Like where would you find the type of people do? Or let me twist that a little bit. Or try and influence your group to change the mindset. I'd say that would be like target number one. Yeah. See, right, okay, cool. Can we try and influence this? Um, if you're not and you're just kind of stuck, then find a new group. And right. I think... Actually, we're quite lucky nowadays is that that there is a whole online world. Yeah. Like, just because people aren't in your local area or, like, within travelling distance, like, don't think of your circle as just the people who are literally around you. Yeah. Like, your circle is everyone that is influencing you. And they don't necessarily have to be, like, your friendship group or people who are here right and now. Like, you could create an online circle or you can find the groups of people who you you want to get influenced by, you know? True. Like, I, I think it's Grant Cardone who talks about something like this, where he's just like, I can be your circle, you know? Like, oh, right, yeah, yeah. Grant Cardone's I like, I, I can be your circle. I can be the person that influences you. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to, like, find, like, nowadays you've got, like, things like Twitter, YouTube, there's tons of online courses. Like, there's a lot of places where you can find that positive influence in your life. So even if you don't have, like, people around you who yeah. are on that mindset and on that wavelength, like you can seek them out, you know, like we live in a world now that's like digitally, just digitally connected. <laughs> so like you can find people who influence you in a positive way. You don't necessarily have to have the people around you. And the second you pull out of that lane, even if you need to do it on your own for a very small period of time, once you're in that fast lane of positivity, moving forward, enhancing your life, you will attract other people naturally. Yeah. And they will want to come on that journey with you, you know, whether it's a new job, or you go to a new company, and and do you know or what? A new area. I think a big trait for wanting people. That's right. Get, getting people to want to do that with you is having is being playful. Yeah, and having might, fun. And being fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like I I always find that I want to spend more time with people that are playful. Yeah, it's like such a I don't know. It feels like a childish thing to say, but it's like almost when you're a kid. You're playful about anything and everything, yeah. but that doesn't mean you're not successful. Kids yeah. are like incredibly playful, but then they're also incredibly good at like learning new skills and stuff like that. And I just think that's such a good trait to have. Yeah. But even when we were in Marbella over the last couple of days, yeah, like think about the people that we've had conversations with, yeah, and think about the people we've had interactions with. Yeah, I know they connected more with us because we were fun. Yeah, <laughs> like you're at, at an event that's like super businessy and. All they kept on talking about was how serious all these other people were, how, uh, how like, uh, like, just like boring the other people they were speaking to were, and they just weren't having fun. Whereas there's me and Derek, who are literally, Derek's playing piano in the bar in front of everyone, <laughs> like, and we're just having fun with it, you know, and just like being genuine and having fun interactions but with people. That also comes from the purpose that you both have, that we all have, yeah, yeah. and that's the people that you are there with. You're allowed to help them and just... Be genuine. Have yeah, genuine interactions with them. And if something goes somewhere and some business comes, then fucking so be it. If it doesn't, doesn't matter. You made some new friends. Yeah. Whereas a lot of people would probably go to an event like that and be like, oh my God, I have to do this. I need to sign this. Or I, I'm only here for business. Like, And they're in that just different mindset of just not being genuine. and having fun. They're not themselves. They're not themselves. It's just a... It's, it's like following a script. It's yeah. like wearing a mask. That's what yeah. we were saying, wasn't it? Yeah, when, yeah, we, when we were in the spa the other day, we were just saying like, there's people who just like walk around all day with a mask on and it's not actually truly who they are. And it's funny because there was a lot of them who got like super hammered when they're there and that's when the mask comes off. But at that point, they're hammered. It's like that thing you sent me the other day. Remember, it's uh, if someone's a dick when they're drunk, yeah. they must be a bit of a dick when they're not because if like, all it takes is a little bit of alcohol to turn them into a dick. Then no, you're a no, dick. A genuine fucking dick. Uh, uh, Never heard that one before. <laughs> it was quite cool. I liked it. I was talking about it with Reilly the other night. Um, but yeah, it just comes back to having fun with whatever you're doing and you cannot fake it. Yeah. 
you cannot fake being a genuine person and wanting to help people. Mm-hmm. And we should probably talk about that. If that's not inside of you, then you need to try and find why that is because yeah. there must be a deeper reason. But or, I always think back to like when, when you, when were you last feeling like that? Like what were you doing? Feeling like? Like happy and plan, uh, happy, fun and playful. Every single fucking day. Yeah, yeah. no, not you. I'm oh. saying like for, for people like listening yeah. maybe, like you said, like think back and like try and find oh, yeah, the root cause. when it was. Yeah, when were you last feeling like that? What were you doing? Have you changed your actions? Have you changed people you're around? Yeah. What have you changed? Something's changed. True. And it, it's not like as you get older, all of a sudden you need to be more serious and you need to be more like, I don't know, like uptight or like, do you know what I mean? Like, so people are quite scared of what they'll get, how they'll get judged. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's not, it's not about being like immature or mature. Oh. It's about like, we are a little just, bit mature. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, yeah, but I enjoy that. I fucking that, love it. Yeah. I love it. I like, I, I like making, not, I don't think I'm that funny, but I like making people laugh. Yeah. That's a good, making people happy. Yeah. That is probably the best trait to have. Nice. Awesome, Derek. That's fucking wicked. I love that. Great life lessons. Cool. Well, so, not. first life lessons for me is just doing hard shit. Like, I feel like a lot of my personal growth has come from just putting myself in fucking uncomfortable situations. <laughs> like, doing, like, for, for example, like starting jujitsu. When I first ever started jujitsu, never done anything like that before. I boxed a little bit when I was younger, but going to jujitsu, like, one, just even putting myself in that situation is fucking uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> like going there for the first time. not Turning there. up, loads of fucking guys know what they're doing. Yeah, I've got no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. But then the actual act of doing jujitsu is also physically tough yeah. and puts you outside of your comfort zone. You can't breathe. Someone's trying to strangle you. They're trying to break your arm. They land on top of you. You've got some guy's sweaty fucking chest in your face. Oh, like don't, don't, <laughs> hey, hairy toe. <laughs> <laughs> um... But like just just putting yourself in those situations, I feel like helps you massively grow as a person. Because exactly. like when you do stuff like that, when other small little things happen in your life, you're so unfazed by it. Like every week, like three or four times a week, I have people trying to punch me in the face and strangle me. <laughs> like you really think the day to day stresses that happen in my life really stress me out that much? <laughs> like not at all. <laughs> but what what would you say? How could someone do that if they're not into martial arts? Yeah. What's like another? There is tons of stuff that you can do that puts you outside of your comfort zone, and it doesn't just have to be physical. You know, there's stuff that's mentally tough that isn't necessarily physically tough. Obviously, both of them tend to go hand in hand. Like just going to the gym, pushing yourself in cardio sessions, yeah. running, swimming, like whatever it is. Something as simple as I do ten k steps every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's like that's challenging m- every day. That's a that, mental challenge, and that's like, not you do comfortable. Not go outside when it's fucking freezing and do it. But I look at the watch, nine thousand five hundred forty-three, <laughs> <laughs> and it is a challenge. You know, like sometimes you get home, and every now and again I'll get back and I've misjudged it, and I'm five hundred steps short. So Ree will see me running around the shower like two step in, <laughs> but you just have to achieve it. Yeah, and continue through with whatever you plan to do. And it just builds up resilience to a point where you're like, yeah, fuck it, I can do anything. Yeah, exactly. And it comes back to what you said about being able to do anything. Like, when you achieve stuff that is super hard, yeah. like, for, like, for example, like, when I moved to Thailand, like, that is fucking uncomfortable. Like, the reason I did it is because it's fucking uncomfortable and I yeah. wanted to put myself in that situation and see what I would do. Like, I moved there on my own, literally didn't know a single person. And I was just like, yeah, I'll just, I'll just go there, it'll be fine. Kind of linked <laughs> Parkinson's law a little bit, the time that you give yourself to do something. Yeah. Like, again, that... Works. And I keep thinking of him as Harry. I don't feel like this or not. Um, but recently when Harry designed our ninth tees, he did this design that had loads of time and that, and it came through and I was like, you can do better. And he just hit like the roadblock. And then I was like, no, go retry. And he went away and he's like, fuck it, I will. And he came up with this most insane design that Dior would probably print on their t-shirts. Like it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. And it was just that, challenge okay cool i can get past it but now this has happened quite a few times where we'll reach the end and it's like all right just go back one next level and some of the stuff that he produces now is like but even that is insane i can imagine for him is uncomfortable yeah it's like he's just put himself in a situation where he's produced something and he's probably happy with it yeah and then you've come back and said you can do better yeah and instead of him shying away from that discomfort which a lot of people do especially once you've met like you spent hours on something especially like i've like been a little bit into art in the past, you draw something for hours and hours and you're trying to create obsessed with it in your head and like, yeah, this yeah. is cool. And like, you're so sold on it by the end. 
yeah. and then all of a sudden like oh let's make loads of changes it's, yeah. it's quite tough yeah and going but, deep on that example if you look at harry 12 months ago and harry now like it's just insane the difference because yeah. but now that's because he's happily in- just say look one more time. Yeah. <laughs> and he almost laughs in his head yeah. and you just see it and then he comes back the next day or the day after. It's because like, he's learned to lean into that yeah. discomfort of yeah. being told like, actually, I know that you can achieve better than this. I know you could do more. Yeah. And instead of him being like, like a lot of people in that situation will go, fuck you. Yeah. I quit. Can leave the company. <laughs> I quit. 100%. That's yeah. true. But he's lent into that discomfort and challenged yeah. himself to do more. And I know literally all of us in here do stuff that is outside of our comfort zone. 100% all the time. Literally all day the time. In, day out. Yeah, mm-hmm. like all the time, like physically, mentally, like even some, I know some of the workouts you do with Danny, I'm like- just thinking that today, <laughs> the legs. <laughs> killer. But instead of shying away from that and being like, oh, I'm not going to go to the gym anymore. I'm just going to quit. I'm not going to yeah. do anything. Like you lean into that discomfort because you know over a, the next couple of months, the next couple of years, like that is going to make you a better person. 100%. So, well. It's funny because- uh, Today we were doing Bulgarian split squats after front, I don't even know how to do it. What, front squat? Front squat with the bar on the front, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was fucking tough and he could see that and he was like, oh, and I was bitching like I do. And at the end of it, like you could almost see in Danny's head is that, like, oh, we'll change it or something next week. And then within like an hour after the workout, I'm going to text him in a minute actually, I was going to do it before we started this. But say no, keep it. Yeah, because that's tough. just that's just yeah that toughness has just taken me to a new level and I've now once the events pass I'm like that was incredible for me as a person yeah like, now I'm ready for more and yeah. I think what you'll find is that so many people nowadays just live in a complete state of comfort <laughs> yeah like they don't ever it's push them it's very themselves. easy to it's, yeah, it is easy to so do. easy to you've got Netflix you've got Deliveroo you can sit at home on your fucking computer watch Netflix like work from home work like, from home people look, so yeah to the point people don't even want to fucking go to the office no more yeah, yeah. and that's normally a low confront level yeah if you look at individuals that want to do that it's because they're maybe a little bit introverted and there's just something there that they don't want to be in that environment, you know. But I think for for anyone who's listening to this, like one of the best things you can do for yourself is force yourself into those situations. But yeah. like I'm naturally quite an introverted person. Like I don't I don't like socializing with a lot of people, you know. I like being in the groups that I'm in. <laughs> um but putting yourself in those situations, like like going to Thailand and just having to meet people, like what am I gonna do? Go to Thailand and be an introvert and just fucking stay on my own for eight months. Like <laughs> that's never gonna be enjoyable, is it? You know? No. So like you have to force yourself into those situations. You're- you're gaining so much self-confidence. Yes, yeah, so much stuff. And that is valuable. Yeah. Self-confidence is incredibly valuable. It opens doors. Like, like you'll meet new people as a result of like just being confident in yourself. Yeah. You'll be able to do things which you previously felt incredibly uncomfortable to yeah. even think about doing. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But like pushing yourself through those uncomfortable things and challenging yourself to do hard shit is like the foundation of having confidence being like mentally robust so that when shit does go wrong in your life, because ultimately stuff is always going to go wrong. Yeah. Like even for us, like I know we say like, oh, everything goes right. We always fucking do everything amazing. But like ultimately shit is always going to hit the 100%. fan. 100%. It's and just it, how you deal with it. Exactly. But putting yourself through hard stuff, both physically, mentally, whether it's walking up a mountain, cycling, swimming, fucking cold plunge pools in the morning, whatever it was. <laughs> cold plunge pools. God. <laughs> Derek proper wussed out the other day. <laughs> <laughs> can freeze it. <laughs> <laughs> but just like pushing yourself in those situations to be like, you know what, fuck it, I'm actually going to do this, will help you build. Like if there's, if there's people listening who aren't confident or they, they struggle with like self-esteem issues and things like that, like putting yourself in situations where you're uncomfortable is like the building blocks of all of those things. It's so interesting as well because so many different people are different in different levels. So, for example, like one might be fitness, pushing yourself mentally there. Another one might be being able to talk to people. And you have almost like these different verticals. Yep. And some people are super high in certain areas and super low in others. Mm-hmm. And I always find it interesting when some people come to you with a problem. And I love helping people fix problems. But you kind of sometimes in the back of your mind are thinking, how is this a problem? Yeah. Like it just becomes, and that's only, and that's not laughing at them. It's laughing at the compound effect of having the last 10, 20 years of being able to slowly compound handling anything. And then what could seem so big to someone yeah. is just minor. And then that person, but as they grow as an individual, that same problem a year down the line, they'll probably laugh at it. Yeah. So just think when you're going through that hard moment, like, okay, cool. 
I'm probably going to laugh at this in a couple yeah. of years. But it's, but it's also like if, like in that example, if someone came to you and they said, I, I'm really struggling with this. Yeah. If you, if they were really successful, like you said, in some other areas, like they're really good at their fitness, they're incredibly like um, consistent and they do all these other hard skills, et cetera, et cetera. You could be like, what do you apply in those areas of your life? And how yeah. could you do that same stuff here? Yeah. I just think it's super important to like lean into that discomfort, never like shy away from stuff, like, like no matter how uncomfortable it is. What do you reckon the hardest thing that you've had to do is? Uh, <laughs> climbing Nevis in the fucking snow was pretty bad. That you was, found that fucking easy. Yeah, I know, but it was like, <laughs> I struggled. it was super unco- like uncomfortable, you know? And it was like, but in that situation, like what can you do? Like you're walking back. I felt like my finger. I felt like I had frostbite. Like I could hardly walk, and I was kept tripping over my crampons, like catching my fucking trousers. And like in that situation, it's like I literally have no choice here. Like I have to just keep going. And in that situation, I literally don't have a choice. But there's plenty of other stuff that I've done in the past where I do have an option. Go get in the car. Go get in the car. Leave. (laughs) Walk out the jujitsu class. Don't turn up to the jujitsu class. Fucking like there's a million different things that I've to think of that I could have easily just shied away from it. But I feel like just leading into that and being like, no, I am going to give it everything that I've got, no matter what, will just help you build a such such a better foundation as a person True. and you'll be so much more grounded when anything else happens. Like, like you were saying about someone that sees a problem in their eyes, to you, probably doesn't look like a problem because you're very grounded and you're very confident in your ability to handle problems. Yeah. But that's come from the last Compound 10, effect. 15 years of constantly pushing yourself and constantly handling it's problems true. all the it's time true. and not just shying away from them. Like imagine if in Yo, at the first sign of problems, you just shut down the business. <laughs> you know? If you ever did start another company again, He's you'd probably just do the same thing again. Because yeah. you? you just shy away the second there's true. a problem. Do you know what yeah. I mean? What's the hardest thing that you've done? Or had to do? Do you know what's really interesting about know. you is that you've had this influence around you for a very long period yeah. of your life mm-hmm. so you probably don't really look at anything <laughs> as hard if anything is hard <laughs> I don't really think about it I would just do it yeah like I try if if something is like very difficult to do I will just force my like for example with like jujitsu or whatever like me saying that recently I won't, I literally won't even think about it. I'll just get in my car and I'll just be like, I'm just going to drive there. I'm just going to walk in the door. All of a sudden, I'm in it, you know? I quite like doing that. Yeah, just like taking, and I think that's one thing as well about pushing yourself is it allows you to separate the emotional from the physical. Like what you're emotionally thinking and when you're in that moment and you're worrying and you're anxious or whatever, like that is not actually you. Like that is just your head, like making up bullshit. any, yeah, making up bullshit to try and get yourself out of the situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like, I think yeah. one thing that comes from constantly putting yourself in those situations is, like, in that situation, that brain knows you learn to, out of place. yeah, you learn to just ignore it. You know, <clears throat> it's like you're probably having thoughts like, oh, I could go home, or oh, I could just turn around, or I could just go to fucking Pepe's instead. But like, you're just so used to constantly pushing yourself that you, you just like, you just don't even think about it. You yeah, know, yeah. what about you? <clears throat> I don't know. Um, normally when I hit walls it's probably fitness related I'm yeah. really really pushing ourselves and I'm like oh my god but now the more we do with that it just becomes like I've done this before and then just break it down mm-hmm. um, my girlfriend says I'm emotionless in relationships and maybe that's that's one thing I struggle with it's <laughs> <laughs> um, the hardest thing it's very hard if you've never randomly gone up to someone so, for example, when we first started Yo and you had to just walk into a business and yeah. just pitch yourself, yeah. just walk into that environment, and most people are quite hostile, and breaking that barrier, that's quite a difficult one. That is difficult. I'd, I'd say. But that can teach you so much, again. like but Again, that's leaning into discomfort, you know? Yeah. I remember Ryan the first time when he made me walk into businesses and start pitching I always him. think of this. Like, you just have to lean into it and just go... I'm just going to fucking do it and shut shut off the other side of your head that's like, don't do this, this is socially awkward, everyone's going to think you're a weirdo, everyone's going to be judging you, like blah, 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 whatever it is, like, and just go, no, I'm just going to walk in there, I'm just going to speak to someone. Do that 20 times, that feeling yeah. will be minimal yeah. after. 100 million percent. Uh, sorry if you see a little bit of a jump in the footage there, guys, we had a little bit of a technical difficulty, but yeah, Naif, over to you for your second life lesson. Okay, my second life lesson would be to support people in any way that you physically can. Yeah. Um, 
physically, financially, mentally, supporting. Just, yeah, any way you can support people that are close to you, do it. And why do you feel that's important? It makes you a fucking nice person for a start. Yeah. Um, but it just brings you together as a group. Yeah. And it kind of comes back to what the previous life lesson was. It's people have different strengths in different areas. And between us as a group, I think that we can achieve anything. Yeah. Even my group outside of EO, between us, we have people in all different areas and we can handle anything. And I kind of gone off the topic a little bit there, but from bringing together and supporting each other through that, you just create this group around you, which also then expands the mindset of, right, anything's achievable. Yeah. Yeah. So we could now say to each other, all right, cool, we have this problem in this area. And if I didn't know the solution, Derek can know the solution or vice versa. Yeah. Nice. I think one of the good examples of you living that is like Ben West when he wanted to get his own apartment. Yeah. Like him, if he'd, if he'd done that on his own, the end result that he had would have been very different because he lent on you to, you know a lot more about that. Financially the, to make it work. Yeah, exactly. You know how to make it work. Numbers. And by supporting him, yeah. it allowed him to achieve what he wanted to achieve, which I can imagine for you is probably quite a nice feeling. Yeah, very. Because you know that you massively helped him get to where he wanted to be yeah. and helped him solve a problem that he was essentially having. Yeah. What are some other examples that you've got of? Like, what was it? What's the biggest one you'd say you've done? That's tough. Um, I think it's just giving people opportunities. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's quite a lot of people close to us all um, that we've given an opportunity in the past and they've taken it and appreciated it more than ever. And they'll probably be of us for the rest of their lives now. Friends. Yeah. Co-workers. Um, just through seeing good in someone and being like, okay, cool, this person just needs me to just pull them onto their ship mm-hmm. and then they're there sailing with us. And I think like you said, like everyone has their the opportunities, own yeah. certain areas that they're good at. Yeah. But like I know, for example, like there's like, let's just say like, like crypto and NFT stuff. It's like, that's somewhere that I can easily add value and help, no and, help and, and help someone with that they don't know. And like, I know, for example, there's like other friends of mine that it's like, I know for a fact that I have made them a lot of money <laughs> And that's just something that I'll happily do because it's like, this is something that I know that yeah. I can help you with. And I would, I know that if we were in, in a completely different situation and there was something that you could help me with, I know they would do that like at the drop of a hat. Yeah. Um, nice. And off the back of that, just being, never set any limitations on the level you can help someone. Yeah. So if it's guaranteeing them for a new property or like we've even had, we've had new people start at Yo that have been with us a month and they just need to get out of a certain space and I'll happily be like, yo, look, I understand the power of putting you in somewhere good mm-hmm. or getting you out of what you're in. So we'll stand behind you with that and if you need to be, if I need to be a personal guarantor for nine out of 10 people that ask me, I'll happily do that. So yeah, reaching out and giving people that opportunity and support, I think that is yeah. very, very, very powerful. I think sometimes it's like something as simple as a chat though. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Support. Yeah. Like That's sometimes nice. people just want to speak, want to talk, want to say something that they might feel nervous to say to anyone else. And if you've got that close relationship with them already, they feel like they can speak to you. Just having that chat, find, helping them find a solution to something that they've got going on that they don't know what to do with. Even if you're not necessarily close to them, just taking the time to be like, hey, look, let's go grab a drink. Yeah. Or grab a bite to eat. That's a massive And just acknowledging, cool, that like you've got this problem. You're not alone. There's people around you, myself, other people. We will support you. And I think the second you see that, you just see like this weight lift off their shoulders. 100%. Like they aren't down this hole looking up with no ladder. You see that thing, don't you, online with the people still at the top? Yeah. Um, no, we're here in the hole with you and we're going to fucking help you up out of this. I think especially doing that with someone who you don't know that well yeah. is especially beneficial for both Parties. You get a good friend, which you didn't really know that well, because yep. they really opened up to you. And also, by <clears throat> by you helping them, like, there's that level of trust then between you. Like, you didn't have to do it. You didn't know them that well. You weren't that good friends. But yet, the fact that someone's willing to help, regardless of the situation, that's pretty amazing. And I think, especially in this day and age, like, 
especially over the last two years, like everyone's got so disconnected, you know? Like, I feel like the pandemic and things like that, like has it made people fearful of like being around other people, which is like the Crazy. worst situation ever for or humanity. Yeah, exactly. And communicating. And I feel like a lot of people nowadays are very shut off from other people or they feel isolated and they feel like the insta dm then pick up the phone and be like, hey. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly but i feel like make like if you as a person can open yourself up to other people and always be trying to like help other people find solutions for other people like you're doing a massive service to the people around you and just to the world in general because i think a lot of people nowadays are very like shut off and just being like like you said just like sometimes just a chat like just a quick text to someone being like hey man I haven't spoken to you in a while, hope you're okay. Like just little things like that. It's amazing how doing that for someone then builds future trust. Yep. Because again, like you can do this once and then you have such trust from that individual that anything that you're like, all right, cool, this needs to happen. It's like, yeah, fuck it. I trust the process. I trust this person. Like, yeah. Just but do also it and like, it'll come out good. It's also like showing that you actually value people. Yeah. People are incredibly valuable for each other. 100%. Like, so at some time in the future you'll probably need that person. Yeah. And having that connection, they will always remember the time when you've helped them. Mm. Having that for the future means it's like what everyone says, not what you know is who you know. Having those connections where you've helped someone in the past, even if you didn't have to, you didn't know them that well, whatever. You've got that for life now. You've got that amazing connection with someone and you'll be able to help each other for anything. And you won't even have to see each other that often. It's not like a friendship thing, but at that stage, it's just a, human being want to help just, each other it still comes back to being genuine yeah. like you can't fake that shit yeah. you need to just want to be a fucking nice individual that wants to help people and solve problems with them or for them yeah and I think it's be like, like alright what can I get out of this yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, what I was about know? to say and I, I think it has to come from a point of like this isn't something of self interest you know like it's you're not doing it for you it's like those people that you see that like um like go and help homeless people but like you know, realistically, they're not doing it to help someone else. They're doing it to make themselves feel good about what they're doing. It's yeah. not like they're not taking the, themselves out of the equation. Like the reason they're going and helping people and filming it or doing whatever is for their own, so they can make themselves feel like a good person. They're not genuinely like interested in the people that they're helping. The, the best <laughs> ones is when someone starts something new and then they get angry because people aren't resharing their business page. You see, you know, like on Instagram yeah. or whatever. Like, yes, it's cool to do that and help your friends wherever you can. But when you see these people, like, all of a sudden, they'll go for a stage of just reposting everyone's things, and then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, can everyone repost mine? Yeah. Like, it's not genuine. Tat, it's not genuine, you know? It's Like, where were you when, when yeah, I went Yeah, out? exactly. <laughs> um, and it's not ever worth judging that, but it's just quite funny in this context. Like, if you're genuine... People would want to do that shit for you. You shouldn't need to be like, oh yeah, if I post yours, will you post mine? Yeah. It doesn't work like that. That's not how life is. Just outflow good energy all of the time and the universe just passes it straight back to you. And that's, I think that's, the, that's one of the big things that I've learned, especially from being around you guys. It's like, the way I always say it is like, you can't take money if your hand's always closed hanging onto what you've got, you know? Like, you'd never be able to receive if you'd never give yeah. And I think it like that's like a massive thing that I've learned from you guys as well. It's like especially just like you said, just outflow. If like if you're always giving out to the world, if it's always like positivity, helping people, if someone's in a sticky situation, helping them get out of it, like just don't expect nothing back. And don't yeah, don't expect anything back, but know that somewhere along the line that sure. good energy is gonna come back to you. Exactly. Well, always. <laughs> yeah. It's always energy. You don't have to expect something in return from that specific person. Yeah. But just know that like if you are continuously putting out good energy, helping people, doing stuff for other people when you don't have to, like that will come back to you. And there's nothing that makes me happier as an individual than helping someone. Yeah. I'd say it's like one of my favorite things in the whole world is helping someone achieve something, achieve their goals. Was, we'll talk about that in another episode. But yeah, just sitting with someone being like, right, okay, what do you want to achieve? And then planning it for them and then they just roll with it and at the end of it, they reach that. There's no better feeling. Or when they have a problem and they come out the other side of it, just knowing that you had a tiny little influence over that, it's, it's above absolutely anything we do, any company size, any wealth, absolutely anything. There's nothing better nice. than just fucking helping people. Yeah, I agree. And I feel we get a lot of energy back. Like I feel the universe blesses us with yeah. good energy all the time. And that probably, that does come from that, just being good individuals. Yeah. 
like some of the random shit that happens it's just energy flowing around it's cool anyway enough from me on that long to you again Derek <clears throat> cool so um, second one of mine big life lesson is make the most of your time time is ticking <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> pretty much I think I said it I think I said it in, a bit in the last episode I can't remember now but um, yeah you have so much time but so little at, at the same time <laughs> little, you do have so, so little but like it's so well, no, what I'm saying by that is like it's so easy to let time go by yeah. and not do what you want to do yeah. and think you have endless amounts of it yeah it's just like you have time right now here and now right now yeah. to go and do what you want to use it like you will never get it back that's massive that's massive for me yeah like and that it kind of relates back to my my first one like always do something to make you happy make, and have fun like because you know you're never going to get this time back realize that what you're about to do is it going to make you happy yeah it's true it's like it's, people a lot quite a lot of people say oh how do you do what you do or what you're always at 200 mile an hour you never relax you never do this you never stop but i just enjoy being busy like yeah. if i sit at home and i do it does happen like even to me like every six months i'll pop up and be like oh my god i just need to sit there and do nothing and i'll have a day at home on the sofa and it makes me the unhappiest person. Yeah, I can't take it. Yeah. Alive. Yeah. Whereas last weekend, if we flash back, um, what did we do, do Saturday? We did a podcast. We did a podcast. Um, I can't remember. Well, sun, no, Sunday we did a podcast. Yeah. yeah. And then I quickly raced down to Bournemouth, picked up a bike that someone's lent me to do our coast to coast challenge. Um, <laughs> and then straight after that, we went for a bike ride in the forest. Yeah. And then I shot over and got my mum, went out for dinner with the family, and then we stopped off at like 9pm on a Sunday. And then I was, I was like, I've had the best day ever, but I didn't have time to stop and do anything. Yeah. yeah. It's like, like us being here now. No time, I say. But yeah, I had time to do everything I wanted to do that day. Yeah. yeah like, and it's right. literally like us being here right now. Yeah. Like, what time did we get up this morning? Like what four? time did you go to bed last night? Like 1.30. 1.30, yeah. got up at half three. Yeah, half, half, four, half four. Half four. Got on the plane, flew back here. Worked all day. Produced all day. Straight to the office, worked all day. Straight here, doing this now. And then Don't I'm driving back to money. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, you can fit anything in yeah. that you want to. Yeah. Um, and that's my biggest thing from when me and Ryan were younger. Ryan was the biggest influence on all of us for fitting anything in. Yeah. And if you can't fit it in, then fit it in anyway. <laughs> yeah. Like There is always a fucking way, you know, like even if it's the shortest of trips. Remember we we popped to France for like 24 hours before. Remember we went to Monaco? We literally were talking, we were talking about, about this two days ago. <laughs> for like a day. Literally it was 24, 24 hours, hours wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. And then just because we knew we were slightly close to the Alps, we stopped off and went skiing for 24 hours. And that was all in the space of like three days because we didn't want to miss any time out of the office. Yeah. Some people think it's just fucking absurd, but that's living, that's yeah. having fun. Literally, we drove to, drove to Monaco. <laughs> we're in Monaco for a day. Drove to uh, Verbier and Verbier. it was shut. Well, no, it was limited, wasn't it? Yeah, went snowboarding for a day. The restaurants were shut. And then drove back again. <laughs> all in the, all in the weekend. Never. Yeah. And then got up Monday morning and did it all again. <laughs> but that is because we were making full use of the time that yeah. we had that weekend. That's why I think, especially like on going away on holiday, stuff like that. Because that is like a big <clears throat> like thing where I think not people don't waste time. Obviously, it's their holiday; they do what they want to do. But I don't feel like they really utilize the time. Go to they, a location but, and just sit there. But no, yeah, and that's fine. If people want to do that, that's cool. But like, it's just when you go away on long trips, yeah. you I feel like it's hard to like go hard. Like your incentives. And, yeah, yeah, but yeah. That's this is why it's like better to do it over like a little three or four day incentive because you're doing something all the all day every day from the time you wake up yeah. until literally like the time you go to sleep, you're constantly doing new and fun things. Yeah. And you know, that's... That, that is like, I love doing that stuff. And that is what, like, creates, like, happiness and good memories is doing new things. Yes. Like, constantly doing new things. And when we go to these places, people come back and they feel like they've done so much. Yeah, I, I always feel like I've been away for, like, two weeks. Yeah. It's insane, isn't it? We've been, away, we've been for like, away for, like, three days <laughs> yeah, every <laughs> single even. time. But it's yeah. because you're doing, like, new, exciting things. Yeah. And ultimately, again, it comes back to happiness. Like, that's what 
makes you happy is when you feel 100%. like you've done loads of new exciting things yeah, and yeah. we we take the piss because we always just laugh at Derek about how much he tries to cram into a fucking weekend that like he we go away on an incentive and Derek will do the planning and it's like right so we're waking up at 10 and then we're going on jet skis and then we'll come back we'll have lunch and then straight away we're going to wake surfing and then we're going out for dinner and then after that we're going here and then we're going to <laughs> top golf and then it's like you have like what most people would probably do over the course of a week on holiday is crammed into one day and then we have the same thing again the, <laughs> the next, next day, day and the next day. Yeah. But that's the funny thing, like that day that you were talking about, I remember it. I remember we were slightly peckish. Yeah. So we stopped off for dinner before dinner. Yeah. And we didn't have any time, but we still went to TGI's, had a feast, <laughs> went home, showered, and then went out for dinner straight after the Oprah. <laughs> like, it's, yeah, it's fun. And you can learn a lot from that. And you meet new people, you get out there, you experience life. Yeah. That is happiness to yeah. me. Yeah. My, as a, a good, like, Again, I'm talking out of work because obviously you're never going to have... You sh- if you have time, like too much time, you're not doing enough of your time in work, then what are you doing really? But like out of work, if, I, like if I'm going to sleep at the end of the day and I think I've had like a good day, is when I have to think about what I've done because I've done so much. Yeah. Yeah. That for me is like, I know I've had a sick day. Yeah, I love that so much. Yeah. That's my favourite. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, it's wicked, Derek. Pretty Go on, good. Final life lesson. Um, so final life lesson for me is just question everything. And I don't mean like, oh, question everyone because you don't believe them. But I think like really t- taking the time to like think about like, <clears throat> not like, why is this person making me do this? Or like, why is this what I should be doing? But like taking it a step back from that and like, okay, what is the rationale behind them doing yeah. that? And not being like, not question it because you don't want to do it, but just like really thinking, okay, like what is the intention of what I'm doing here? Got it. And That's cool. Even, even like silly things, like when, when you notice yourself have an emotional reaction to something, like questioning that, like why... What's triggered me? What's triggered me? Why do I feel uncomfortable in so this situation? What, what you're saying is like anything that you, or any like interaction you have with someone else where you've got to do something or whatever, yeah. it's taking it back and looking at the purpose of what's going on. Yeah, exactly. Is that what you mean? And like really like... That's really good. Broad picture looking at stuff. Because I think that's definitely one of the things that's helped me over the last like couple of years is like <clears throat> really like thinking about like okay like what are we trying to do here dealing with my shit yeah <laughs> but, but like when you say to, say to me like oh okay we need to do this like instead of me asking you like why because that's just like in my opinion that's like rude like, <laughs> or, like, like oh, but I sit and think like okay so like what what is the purpose of what I'm trying to do right now yeah. like try and put yourself in other people's shoes of like why is this person saying this or why is this person asking me to do this or why has this person had an emotional reaction to something that I've said? Like, what could I have done in that situation yeah. to make things go better? And constantly questioning, like, how can I improve on this? What can, and what can I take away from this situation? So you're like trying to validate everything for what it is. Yeah, basically. that's really good. And I, th- I think especially it's beneficial for like, like questioning yourself and not questioning yourself in a bad way where like you don't believe what you're saying or you're anxious about stuff, but just like noticing like, okay, I don't feel super happy right now. Like, what is it that is making me unhappy right now? Because I feel like a lot of people just go through life just kind of like coasting Accept along. It as a norm. Stuff happens, to, like stuff just happens in their day-to-day life and that's just the way thing is, things are. And I wake up today and I'm unhappy, so I'm unhappy today. I'm an unhappy person. I'm an unhappy person. Maybe I'm depressed or maybe, maybe like there's something else that's going on in my life where it's like taking a step back. The second I catch myself slipping... I'll get a notepad yeah. and I'll write down exactly what's making yeah. me happy. Yeah. And I can rip it up and throw it at the end. But if you just take that time on your own... And question yourself. <laughs> you will very quickly find the source of the problem and then you know, cool, that's what I need to go and handle and then all my problems will blow away. Yeah. And also off the back of that, it's really interesting. From a high level, probably something I've learned to do more in the last 24 months is to ha- try and understand, to explain stuff better. Yeah. Because instead of just saying, yo, can you go do this? It's like, oh, could you get this done? This is the reason why we need to achieve this because we need to do X, Y, and Z, which then means X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. Instead of like sometimes, obviously people that are close to us, lot, we can just say that and we just trust each other because we're at that level. It's putting more empathy into it, you mean, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. with people that probably don't have that long-standing relationship to be like, that. hey, we need to do this. I know it's out of the ordinary but this is the reason why we need yeah. to do that. But that comes back to questioning yourself and questioning how is this person going to interpret what I've said? Yeah. And are they going to walk away from this interaction feeling good? Or are they going to walk away from this interaction feeling bad? So you could also say what you're saying is that it's not necessarily question yourself, 
but it's like don't be in like an automatic mode about Trigger. things. So instead of like not questioning yourself, it's more just be in the present time with 100%. the things you're doing when yeah. you're doing them. And tr- try and take the time to understand like why it is that you're doing what you're doing. You know, because everyone's got bad habits and everyone's got things that maybe they're not like super proud of that they do. But I think taking the time to like really like, instead of just accepting that, like think about like, okay, why am I doing this? Like let's say for example, like um, you're trying to stick to a diet and you just keep like self-sabotaging, like thinking about like, why am I actually doing this? Yeah. Is it because I'm just going out with my friends and having a great time? Because if it is, then that's not necessarily a negative thing. Because if you're going out, you're enjoying yourself, you're spending time with your friends and socializing. And yeah, maybe you do have a goal to get in good shape or whatever it is. But equally, spending time with your friends is just as important. Yeah. And yeah, maybe there's things you could do in that situation to limit the damage. But actually, when you like are thinking about like what's on my priority list, like getting in shape is on my priority list, but also spending time with my friends and enjoying the interactions that I have with them is pretty high up that list as well. So where do I... I can't be hard on myself. Yeah, for, yeah. I can't be hard on myself for doing that because that that's, also some, yeah. that's also something I enjoy doing. I'm a massive sure. believer of the greater good. Yeah. So what out of it has the most chips? You know, it's like you said then, not locking yourself up because you're on a diet and you're trying to eat healthy and not drink. Yeah. But being like, right, okay, cool. What, what am I, what's going to make me happy? Yeah. Where are these chips? Like you only have so many pots, but if you pile them all into like life restriction, then all of a sudden they fall out of the happiness pot. Yeah. Yeah, I just spreading them around for like the greater good of what you're trying to achieve at that moment. In and time. that does come from questioning yourself on like, what do I value? Yeah. Like what is important to me in my life and doing stuff that's fun and making sure you're making use of your time. Like thinking about that and thinking like, what actually do I find fun and what do I actually enjoy doing and making sure that you prioritize that stuff? Because I feel like a lot of people, they know what makes them happy they know what they want to do more of, but they just think, yeah, I, I just do that when I do it. Instead of really like taking a step back and thinking yeah. like, okay, what can I do to prioritize that thing that makes me happy? That's quite interesting. Actually. That's very interesting. Yeah. So I, I find like a lot of people, like it's very easy, especially like I know f- for me as well, it's very easy to be an autopilot. Like you're just like blasting through life without even like really thinking about it. It's like, you've got your routine, you do this, you do this, you do this. And it's like, sometimes you need to kind of st- take a step back and think like, am I doing what I want to be doing right now? And is that making me happy? And if it is, then great, you just carry on doing what you're doing, you know? I think a lot of that ties back to your long-term goals. Yeah. We should probably wrap up there and maybe discuss goals in our next episode. Yeah, definitely. Because I feel that a lot of what we talked about now can be easily tied into goal setting and making sure you're achieving goals. You're very clear on that, everything that you're... Yeah, and all of those life lessons tie into helping you achieve your goals ultimately. Like if you... If you have clear set goals, pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone, uh, making sure that you're spending your time in the best way possible, enjoying the process, like all of those Helping things. Everyone sh- around you. Yeah, yeah. all of those things should tie into your long-term vision and long-term goals. So yeah, we'll save that for another episode and we'll, uh, we'll wrap up the episode there. But, a story oh, for another day, mate. Yeah, that's a story for another story day. For another day. <laughs> um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully people listening to this got some uh, useful things out of that and hopefully yeah. maybe there's some things that you can pull out and use in your own life but give us any feedback again yeah. excited to get the uh ball moving on this even more awesome we'll wrap it up there guys yeah thanks for listening peace <laughs> peace <laughs>